School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. Okay, so first of all, why are we looking at for flea beetle damage in a barley crop? Well, I think it's a good place to start um, early in the season. Um, for, for growers that maybe haven't started seeding yet or their crop hasn't emerged yet, take a look at their volunteer canola or, um, or any cruciferous weeds and, and that's where uh, your flea beetles are migrate to first. Um, as we know, flea beetles overwinter in field margins or ditches or tree rows or fence lines. So they're likely going to start there and then move into the center of the field. So that's where I would start. Okay, so we got tree line or a tree kind of sort of at the edge of the field so perfect we're in the perfect spot we're in a great spot here okay what are we finding well we're finding a little bit of damage on on some of the volunteer canola and the volunteer cruciferous weeds uh here's some small canola and in, in uh, right here that's that's got some little flea beetle damage we're seeing that windowing um what's happening is the flea beetles are feeding right through it and and in this region here i suspect that they're crucifer flea beetles okay so what what is that i've, I've only ever a lot of guys only talk and they're, it's flea beetle damage, so what, what, what are the different kinds? Well, there's three main species I think that we're concerned about, um, but, but the two that I guess are at the top of the chopping block are the cruciferous flea beetle, which is more the, the traditional flea beetle for the prairies, um, but now we're seeing um, higher numbers of the striped flea beetle. And uh, the striped flea beetle, I guess, is going to be more predominant once we go Edmonton um, to uh, the Peace River region. Um, if we're Calgary, south to the Montana border, um, we're likely going to find the cruciferous flea beetles. But keep in mind that we're going to find pockets of either or in either location. And that central area from uh, Edmonton to Calgary is kind of a mixed bag, but the majority being striped flea beetle. Do our high-end seed treatments that come with our canola in the bag, does, does it control all the different kinds? Well, no, actually it doesn't, John. Um, flea beetle... Um, control measures were first um, used or tried on the uh, the cruciferous flea beetle, so the one that was more traditional, and it was the neonicotinoids that we put on on our seed treatments that that help control those flea beetles. And um, what happens now is the striped flea beetle comes along, and it actually emerges a little bit earlier, and um, and it's also harder to kill. They have a protein that um, that actually restricts that neonicotinoid from. Uh, from causing the high mortality rate. So what are we supposed to do then? So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to go out and scout. See what you have for flea beetles. See if you have the cruciferous or the striped flea beetle. If you do notice that you have the striped flea beetle, you kind of want to go out there a little bit uh, a little bit more often and um, keep closer eye on, uh, on your canola because they are harder to kill and they do emerge earlier. So kind of by default, they feed more. Um, just because the, uh, the the striped and the crucifer, they're basically the same animal. They uh, they have the same metabolism. They have the same um, number of eggs, same generations, one generation per year. Um, but it's just they feed a little bit more by default because they're a little bit harder to kill. So is there a better time of the day to try to find them? The best time of the day to scout for flea beetles is going to be in the heat of the day. That's when they're going to be most active and you'll be able to see the flea beetles actually uh, bouncing around often. But he does their chewing and their feeding activity look the same on the plant? Yes, it does. And, and even with a crucifer flea beetle, you're going to find some chewing on the plant because that, that um, flea beetle has to ingest some of that insecticide before it dies. So um, with the crucifer flea beetle, you're going to see some feeding on your plant and then hopefully, um, hopefully they'll, they won't survive. What products are we supposed to use to control them? Um, that's when you would go to your provincial grower guide and uh, your provincial crop protection guide, sorry, and um, take a look at all the, uh, the different insecticides that we have. Some insecticides were traditionally made and they're general, they say it's for flea beetles. Um, and some say they're specific to crucifer flea beetles. So know your enemy, I think, is the, is the big point. So Sean, here we are face to face with this flea beetle. As we can see that this is the crucifer flea beetle. Just right in front of me there, I'm using this twig here to point him out. Um, you can see his long antennae if you get really close there. And as you can see, this one's completely black and a little bit shiny. Um, that, that's suggesting that it's the crucifer flea beetle. If it was a striped flea beetle, we would see two elongated stripes on either side of its back. So as you can see, they're very, very, very small. They're, um, you know, even a little bit smaller than a canola seed. 
So uh, they're very hard to spot a lot of times. You have to get right down and see. Here's another one here, Sean, that's looking right at you. And the damage is kind of all around it right there. I'm gonna see if I can get this guy to move a little bit for us. He should just, see, he's just gone, just like that. Jumped probably 80 feet. No, I'm kidding. He probably jumped uh, about six, eight inches, um, but up to 24. Okay, here we have this flea beetle here right at the very edge, and I'm gonna just disturb him a little bit. See that nice long antennae that they have? A crucifer flea beetle as well here. We're just gonna give him a little tap. They've got really strong back legs, but he's gonna just scoot out of there. So he's just chewing on the leaves then? Yeah. 